Welcome to this special broadcast. I'm Tamanna Anamdar. A shocking case has come to the fore, which brings into light the role of auditors, specifically one of the big four. I'm talking about Deloitte and an SEC observation as per reports, which questions Deloitte's role in a Nigerian firm's auditing. This fintech firm called Tingo had been certified by Deloitte as having $470 million in their account when the firm had just $50. Let that sink in. The firm had just $50 and the report said they had $470 million. In fact, the SEC found millions of dollars in fictitious transactions. But Deloitte had given a clean chit to this Nigerian firm called Tingo. The bigger picture, though, this Nigerian scam is the latest in a list of Deloitte controversies. And, of course, this firm is once again in the eye of the storm. In fact, I just want to pull up a report on the irregularities in this company to highlight what the issue is. And this report actually says Tingo's financial mess was glaring enough that we'd expect they could have been spotted by any semi-conscious finance undergrad with severe vision loss. That's how harsh Deloitte's auditing has been judged. It is a checkered history, no doubt. And let's just start from some, and these are literally a handful of cases I've picked. Let's start from this case in January 2019, where Deloitte Malaysia was fined $80 million for the audit of a state-run company called 1MDB. In fact, this unit, that's Deloitte's Malaysian unit, was raided in May 2019 in this scam investigation as well. The company, uh, Deloitte, has said that they are cooperating and there was no wrongdoing. December 2022, a UK regulator has fined Deloitte over 900,000 pounds for irregularities. This was after Deloitte was sacked by SIG, the same company for irregularities in their accounts, and then the fine. In May 2023, it came closer to home. ED has conducted searches at ILNFS auditors, which include Deloitte, BRS, and others. Uh, the Supreme Court has also allowed criminal proceedings against Deloitte and others in ILNFS. Remember the ILNFS case where the role of auditors was definitely under the scanner for not um, finding the links that led to a huge collapse which rocked the Indian economy. Closer in date, in May 2023, Chinese regulators have imposed a $30 million fine, or nearly a $31 million fine, on Deloitte's Beijing offices. The fine was for failing to adequately audit a state-owned company, and this asset management company was mired in such corruption that their head was sentenced to death by the Chinese government uh, for irregularities. Deloitte was the auditor. It's literally across the globe you see these discrepancies coming in. In 2023 of September, a Colombian regulator imposed $900,000 fine on a Deloitte affiliate. The regulator has questioned system of quality control. Now, the question that we're asking here today is why are we seeing so many instances of these irregularities at one of the biggest audit firms in the country. To speak more on this and to understand the endemic issue, I'm joined now by Shailesh Haribhakti, his chairman at Shailesh Haribhakti Associates and Vay Jain, managing partner at VJA. He's also past president of ICAI. Welcome to both of you and thank you so much for speaking with us today on NDTV Profit. Uh, Mr. Haribhakti, let me begin with your take. Why do you think we are seeing these cases time and again is this a concern with this particular organization where you have so many of their affiliates in various countries under the scanner and frankly i've not even put out the whole list you have such cases and penalties imposed in pretty much every major geography no tamanna i think this is a perception gap and expectations gap between what the regulators and the audit community wants from auditors and what auditors are ready to provide. And I think this gap is going to increase as the world embraces artificial intelligence, blockchain, and such other technology, 
which is supposed to enhance the trust in what is reported and is supposed to discover or predict there being any problems based on data that is gathered about a particular entity. And so I think there is time today for auditors to take fresh guard and think about how would they be in a position to actually deliver to the expectations of the auditees and of the regulators. That is the big transformation that will be necessary. And I'll just give you three things which we need to focus on. One is we need to focus on data capture as data flows through the financial system. Two, we need to depend on repositories of existing issues and problems that have already been discovered so that the current data can be passed through this repository in order to determine deviant patterns and then go into root cause analysis of those deviant patterns. And three, it is very important to bring in an outside in perspective on auditing, which till today is almost completely inside out. So if the auditing profession rethinks its mandate and adopts new technology, and I know that all the big firms in the world are investing in AI and in blockchain, but this needs to now be brought together very swiftly so that the kind of uh, allegations and the kind of fines and the kind of problems that you just, you uh, outlined at the beginning mm. are avoided. You know, the question though is about intent and I'm going to come to uh, Mr. Wade Jain on this. Are these all just lapses involuntarily uh, made by perhaps individuals within these organizations. Can we put it down to that, Mr. Vajjan, if you see case after case after case, or is there more? Are there concerns of collusion? Is there concern of lack of transparency? Uh, Tamana, you are right. I think, uh, as uh, Chaliji has said, we need to first appreciate the role of the auditors See, auditor is an assurance provider, not an insurance provider. Secondly, as you have cited many instances of this swarm across the globe, maybe China, Malaysia, USA, and Nigeria, see, one has to identify whether the, this default which has occurred is a systematic default or a default which is case of a negligence. So in case there is an issue of a systematic default, then I will say that yes, auditing profession is the person responsible, is the institution responsible, and they need to go and introspect that how come these type of defaults are occurring, and if there is a systematic failure, they need to address that system. But in case, as you have rightly said, if it is not a system failure, then there is an individual failure, and individual failure also have to be classified under two categories. One, involuntary, maybe negligence, and which may be to the extent of a gross negligence. And the second category, which is the most serious category, is voluntarily where the person involved may be in league with the other person involved there. So to, we need to identify each individual case based on these three parameters, whether it is a systematic failure, whether it is involuntary negligence, gross negligence, and the third is whether there is a voluntary and it is there is a connivance on the issue. You will appreciate howsoever the efficient system may be, in society there will always be certain exception. In case it is a case of a voluntary or something connivance, then nobody can help it out. It is an agency, investigating agency will need to take care of. And you cannot put anything, an issue on the profession or the farm or like this because it is an individual behavior which has affected and which has been taken care of. But that, in the case of... Yes, please. No, that is absolutely true. My question is that are all of these coincidences, Mr. Jain, uh, that you have these cases coming again and again, and in the Arlen FS case, now the Supreme Court has allowed criminal proceedings uh, against the auditors. Um, my question is that what is the responsibility of the name 
uh, named auditor, in this case Deloitte. I know they work with affiliates and individual partners, but it's the brand name of Deloitte that carries weight at the end of the day. Where is their responsibility? I do agree. You see, in case a big firm which carries a brand name and which is involved, it has to maintain its reputation. The auditee has reposed confidence because the brand name is there and the big name is there. The regulator also has reposed confidence. Yes, there is a big firm and big auditor and brand value is there. And then they have to carry out an introspection definitely to see, find it out what is going wrong and whether uh, what type of internal control they are having, what type of mechanism they are having and why these are happening on this issue. There is no second thought on that aspect also on this issue. But at the end of the day, you need to identify the case to case where the things have gone wrong. There is no second thought, as you have stated the facts of Nigeria, there's something is wrong there. And as you see some example, how it could have been easily detected on that part. Now we need to go to the next step. What was the reason for this happening? And that can happen only with the investigation. Even in the Indian case, where you have referred to a case going on, it is because of the investigation, something has come up now that the investigations are all, there is no nothing wrong in that system. But you will, you will agree, that the first thing which I told you about is that so many large companies are being auditing across the globe by the big firms and the other firms also. And by and large, the system is working. It is only in exceptional cases, in a very few cases here or there, these type of examples come. Where I will say the human behavior, human negligence, or connivance, I will not rule out whatever it is. Maybe the main reason which is happening which is causing this problem. Okay. And this is... In a society, and such a big society, and such a big world, I will not say the examples are very large on the added numbers. Would you would you say that, Shelly Shari Bhakti, that if you if you are uh, expecting that kind of credibility, and you have such a large number of cases coming in, maybe as a proportion of all the firms audited uh, by a Deloitte or a PwC, they may be uh, a little. But is this a tolerable level of wrongdoing? See, or penalization in, in various uh, uh, countries or cases where questions are being raised on transparency? Can this all just be negligence? No, it's uh, clearly there's more than meets the eye. And therefore, I would kind of double click on what Vedji said, that we need to, in every case, make sure that a fair investigation is done to establish what were the real facts. But it seems to me that the frequency of discovery of uh, lack of application is so high that the need seems to be today for the introspection aspect to be far, far more highlighted and far more investment to be made in systems and processes which will prevent these kind of egregious differences between the reality and the reported facts uh, coming through and being noticed. And so I would say there is a lot of work that needs to be done by regulators, auditors, and by auditees who must voluntarily want to make sure that their financial reporting is trustworthy. That's what blockchain gets you. And what the AI gets you is an outside in perspective. So all of this needs to be factored into, baked into the new way in which auditing ought to be done. Absolutely. So 